Hi everybody! Hello, Noga! Hi, Gil! Episode 1, Season 8, Episode 1! Da, 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 da. I think it was definitely worth the wait. I had a blast. Yeah. I'm not sure if my fan meter was more influenced by the long wait, the long night, the anticipation, and how much is specifically the quality of the episode. I thought it was a good episode, though it started off with boss jokes and dragons, just to show us that this is what the show now is about. You take great offense at dwarf jokes, but love telling eunuch jokes. Why is that? Because I have bowls, and you don't. It's very epic, mm -hmm. but simple. Dramatic, but not subtle. So, so this is what the show is, and I'm all about enjoying this ride. One down, five episodes to go. <laughs> Say it, don't spray. <laughs> I feel like I'm ha I was having like a constant heart attack throughout the day yesterday and during the episode. I was like, I just like, couldn't believe it. Okay, so let's talk. We've singled out two major themes in this episode that say a lot about the whole story. There's the personal, here it was reunions, meeting again people from your family, from your, from your past, and the inherent instability of the feudal political structure. Who is on top? Who are we? What are we uniting under? How do we organize ourselves in order to achieve what we want to achieve? We need more horses and wagons, if it please, my lady. And my lord and my queen. So I'm not a doctor in psychoanalysis, but then again, <laughs> neither that, are you. Yeah. <laughs> I think you should work a little bit harder on it. You're not working hard enough, Naga. I'm it's joking. in revision. It's going to be submitted soon. I'm joking. Yeah. I'm joking. I've been waiting. I've been sitting on that joke for weeks. Waiting. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So put on your psychoanalyst therapist hat. Okay. Reunions. Mm -hmm. What does it mean for us psychically? Reunions hold together like the spectrum of past, present, and future. They uh, reunite us with parts of ourselves that we, th we felt like we had left in right. the past. Also with who we are now and we can see the difference. Right, and, how much we've changed. Yeah. And also who are, maybe who we're going to become. If it was according to expectations, if it wasn't, what will the reunion right. uh, create in right. us and in our relationships with others? So, yeah, it's like whatever, a high school reunion. You, you meet somebody, and the moment you meet somebody, then you see how much you've changed, how much you've aged. Not me. Of course. Of course, just the white hair and but white beard. You just graduated like three years ago, so, I mean, there's not a lot of change in three years. So all this happened in three years? <laughs> <laughs> this is what you're saying, I'm not sure. Oh, okay, sorry. <laughs> all the trouble and all the tragedy that I've went through, all my successes, my failures, this is what other people meet when yeah. they go to high school graduation. For me, it's just like, oh, here I am. Of course. Of course. But, but yeah, it's like a different uh, also self-state that you re-encounter, that you haven't been in touch with, maybe. In the episode, we can see that uh, when Aria, even though she went through a lot, in those years. When she sees John, she goes back to being the little sister. She jumps on him, he, he picks her up, right. picks her up in the air like she's the little sister again. Right. I mean, it's not something that we've right. seen from Aria, that side of her, so, since, since uh, maybe Ned died. Right, right. She's like the most ruthless killer out there. Mm -hmm. But so it's like you could be 40, whatever, but you go whatever at your parents, your parents' place. Yeah. You become, yeah. mom, <laughs> stop telling me what to eat. Yeah, we re-encounter that state and we, become that person again, even mm. for a little while. Sam has been through a lot since the last time he saw John, and he has definitely become... Uh, uh, yeah, grown. Grown, yeah. He's more into his own, like he's more of a, his own person right. now. Right, he knows who he is. When he sees John, then he goes back to being that clumsy boy again. You know, he falls down the stairs immediately. I mean, he's not been like that for a while. Right, you just say, you save Jorah. I think you can yeah. get down the stairs. Yeah, like walk <laughs> gracefully down the stairs. You don't need to tumble down like a... Son. <gasps> That's the self that uh, goes uh, back into life. Reemerges. Reemerges, and then he comes to him, and he tells him, the first thing he tells him was... Uh, 
you know, the nurse did this and that to me. <laughs> like I was bullied again. Yeah, it's like you're a parent, whatever, you're sitting, you're sitting on the computer, your kid uh, comes, oh, daddy, my sister took the doll. Oh, daddy, she burned my, my father and brother. Just take care of it, I'm busy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, John doesn't want to be bothered by that, and especially, you know, now that he has conflicted the interests. Mm. But, uh, yeah, but it seems also that uh, Sam doesn't say that only to, to complain about her, uh, he's saying that like as a political thing. I mean, just telling John, Boom. yeah, she's different than who you are. I mean, she, Boom. you would spare people. She doesn't spare people. Boom. She's ruthless. You need to right. be aware of her. Right. It's not just that uh, my feelings hurt because my brother and father died. There's mm -hmm. a political uh, significance yeah, for it. Yeah, it right. means something about her. Right. And, and for all of us. Mm -hmm. Her character is not right. just like I don't like your new girlfriend. We're going to talk about that more later. Yeah. Because here in this world, in this feudal world, the political and the personal are one. Mm -hmm. There's no nation state that is above the leader. Let us and one. I am the king is the state. The queen is the state. The pyramid is very clear. There's a specific person on the top of the pyramid. Mm -hmm. especially, especially now when after this civil war, there's no house that is above all other houses. Daenerys, she has the dragons, she has the personal loyalty of her armies, the Dothraki and the Unsullied. Mm -hmm. They don't follow her because of uh, some vague idea and some vague loyalty. So the personal relations, and we saw that throughout the episode. The Northmen are loyal to Jon Snow, not to her. They don't know her. The free folk don't know her are the basis of the, political, of the political reality. So I would say that the political and historical element in this episode, for me, there was a lot of echoes of World War II. Everybody has to unite because there's a bigger threat there that will annihilate us all. Mm -hmm. So you have the Allies and you had the USSR who have been staunch enemies for a long time. They understand that in order to survive, they have to put aside their differences to fight together. And those similarities between the, the, the Great War and, and World War II, I think, highlight the contrast between our current more democratic, more national uh, structure than the feudal structure. When, uh, when Tyrion says the Lannisters are coming, mm -hmm. people don't want to unite uh, together with the Lannisters. Right. In World War II, when the Soviets uh, switched over, it was an incredible victory for, uh, for the Allies. They weren't like, no, no, we don't like you. And we can see that there are a bunch of like very, you know, rigid and stubborn and, you know, really not... Northerners don't much trust outsiders. Northerners in the sense of like the great north is bigger than the sum of its parts. I mean, at the, okay. mo at the certain moment, there's no cohesion there. Everything is fragmented again. So what is true regarding the group is also true regarding the individual. What do you mean? In the sense that uh, our self-states are what basically uh, constructs us. Like, uh, and, and the whole illusion of like a cohesive personality that we are only, mm. you know, we are who we are and we are that all the time mm. is merely an illusion. It's a very important illusion. We need to have a sense of self, and the sense of self is uh, dependent on our ability to feel that we are ourselves, and it doesn't matter how differently we behave and act in different situations, and we do. Okay, if like, we're we, at work, or with friends, right. or with our children. We are different with different people because different people bring different sides of us. Like we have different roles in life, so we change through the uh, when we change roles. With different friends, we are different. I mean, there are friends that we are quieter with, and there are friends that we're more playful, right. and there are friends that we're more, right. you know, serious or competitive. Right. Right. Or I mean, it's uh, we're in the same role of being friends, but we're different with each friend. It's interesting that you're saying that it's a good illusion, our uh, cohes cohesive self. Uh, Buddhists will say that th th this is indeed an illusion, they would agree, but they would say that it is, the illusion is hindering us from seeing reality and from, 
attaining nirvana, you can say whatever, being happy. So with Arya, we can see that uh, the reunion was with different parts of herself. We said it's like the past, present, and future. Uh, she gets reunited with her past self, like the through the child that she watches, the child that uh, is in Winterfell. He is looking at the uh, the, the royal procession. Right, and uh, that's how. Uh, Arya was like when she was uh, mm -hmm. around his age, I mean, right. in the first episode. Right, like and then the she, season. it seems like, right, she has all these faces, and now she puts on, that's also a self-state, right? Mm -hmm. and then the, the face right. that she puts on is like her smug face. Mm -hmm. Then with mm -hmm. John, right, she's the little sister again. Right. So she grows up a bit mm -hmm. from a child mm -hmm. to a little sister. So uh, with Gendry, she goes back to the state of like the, like the mutual teasing part. Of her being like, oh, me lady, me lady, whatever this and that. So, uh, and but now she's like the young woman, right? She's not uh, the little girl anymore. As you wish, me lady. Right now, there's like a sexual uh, tension uh, yeah. when they're when they're. It's like flirting now. I always knew you were just another rich girl. You don't know any other rich girls. Yeah, because now she's legal, mm -hmm. right? Your grace. I mean, basically, he claims not to have changed so much, but other people think that he has. Like he says, all I ever cared about was right. protecting my family. Were protecting the North. The North doesn't right? say the family. The, the North. Fam the North, right? Because he doesn't uh, always feel like a part of the right. family. Right. He's the odd guy out in the in this Stark uh, pack. I guess uh, easy t for him to be part of the North and not just part of the Starks. Right. Pan-Northerner is better than for him to be a house. He's Snow. Yeah, he's Snow. Right. A bastard of the North. Like, uh, like he belongs to the North. So, uh, right. But now he knelt mm -hmm. to a Southron uh, queen with dragons. Yeah. But he sees it as the same core. Like, he sees it as, yeah, I've always said that I'm going to take care of the North and I'm just going to do what's best for the North. Right. And that was best for the North. That's why I did it. John might be right, but Sansa is all also right pragmatically. Like, you could see Sansa, the whole episode, she's very consistent. Mm -hmm. She is only thinking of the day after. She's thinking in political terms. Well, I ensured our stores would last through winter. I didn't account for Dothraki, Unsullied, and two full-grown dragons. I don't know what good can she do for the war, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but she is definitely the best placed out of all of them to pick up the pieces afterwards. Right, right. And you could see how much she's changed with her reunion with uh, Tyrion. Mm -hmm. Last time they met, she was whisked over to go to Littlefinger. She was just a pawn being taken everywhere. Mm -hmm. And now she's like, you believe your sister? Right. <laughs> I thought you were, you were so clever. I'm not sure if you changed or if I changed. Right, right. Uh-huh. I've become now so much smarter. Mm -hmm. If you go back to John, so he still thinks that Arya is the same little girl who hates her big sister. Right, right. Because they used to, oh, Sansa, <laughs> she's so stupid, she's so condescending. And again, he says, she thinks she's smarter than everybody because that's the image that he has of her since right. their childhood. Mm -hmm. But now, what Arya says is that she is smarter than everybody. Yeah, yeah. So he brings his girlfriend back to see his family. Right. And he hopes everybody will like his girlfriend. Mm -hmm. So far, not good. No, not very good. <laughs> Nobody likes his girlfriend. I don't like her so much anymore. Yeah. I don't like her so much anymore. Well, I mean, of course they're not going to like her. I mean, because we like her when we see, you know, the good that she does and like the charisma did. that she did, right? But uh, We liked her when she was an underdog. Yeah. So now she's like challenging him. Mm -hmm. Who are you, John? Mm -hmm. can, you, can you keep up? Mm -hmm. I, I don't know. I liked it. Yeah. I would like to meet a dragon uh, queen. <laughs> it's a little bit, I don't think, I just said that I don't like her and, okay. <laughs> I think, I have I some, think uh, that's uh, exactly one of the conflicts that uh, you're dealing with, Gil. <laughs> okay, we'll talk about it later. <laughs> Cut. <laughs> Why would I want to, to go out with someone that I don't like? Okay, <laughs> let's deal with that later. So, boom, call it confirmed. We said... And we predicted that John will not be happy about the discovery. Mm -hmm. Daenerys is our queen. She shouldn't be. And I think this crisis of identity that John uh, represents 
we saw it on the on the dragon he's like uh, okay i'm riding the dragon i can do it but i'm not like a full targaryen either like i'm not enjoying it as she is enjoying it okay cersei cersei what about her like meeting her different self states she's basically almost all alone which is now realizing how much she's changed from uh, from the beginning mm -hmm, mm -hmm. in theon we do see that uh, he went through several self states when he saw yara mm -hmm. like he went in all confident and then you could see the reek in him like the way he looked at her he, yeah. i mean he lost his confidence when he saw her because right. he wasn't quite sure how she'd react and because he's a very good actor also and because he's a very good actor like you can really see the self states shifting on his face <laughs> Communication within the Ironborn is very straightforward. <laughs> very straightforward. Yeah. Kicking the balls, <laughs> yeah. headbutting someone. But then you know it's over. Like there's no grudge. It's like yeah. It's not like are you okay? Yeah, I'm okay. You know, <laughs> you can see that something's bothering her, but she's not saying it. <laughs> and she gives him the face. <laughs> and then are you sure you're okay? Yeah, if you don't know, you know. <laughs> She just gives, she knocks him over in the head and that's over with. I mean, it's... Uh... Yeah, I would like to meet someone like that. <laughs> this was very, a very underwhel uh, underwhelming uh, reunion. This was like, that's it? This is what the whole... Is <laughs> over in one minute, comes in, come out on the ship. Right. So, wow. Yeah. So silly. Maybe they're p planning to get rid of him or something. No, I think they're planning <laughs> to get rid of Yara. She's like... Uh, so you want to go to the north, but uh, my contract has run out, so I'll see you later. I think we're, we're not going to see her, yeah. maybe until the very last scene right. of the last episode or something. But it was supposed to be like a scene where he regains his confidence and his power and like something that is very symbolic right. also. And Facing his tormentor right, and his demons. And like, so, no, nothing. It was just like, you know, coming in, going out. It was very... And now he's still, I want to go to the north, my queen. <laughs> yeah. What the fuck is that? Yeah, <laughs> I exactly. would headbutt him again. <laughs> she tells him you should go and fight for the north, but then she said, what is dead never, can never die. Like she, she reassures mm. his... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> so right after the episode, right, uh, on HBO, you have like the behind the episode. Mm -hmm. And you see Dan and Dave, they're talking about uh, what they perceive as the themes of the episode. And we were talking about it. They are very unimpressive uh, creators. They're like, this is good. This is bad. <laughs> she is strong. <laughs> it's like, very, it's like, there's like no excess fat or, 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 or subtext right. in anything. It's just right. like, this is it. This is unstable. She doesn't like him. He doesn't like her. There is tension. Ooh. And we were talking about how we felt uh, that they were really aiming for the cat fight uh, element mm -hmm. between Daenerys and Sansa. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right, the cat fight element. So. Uh, yeah, it's like they're planting it in our brains, just making us think. Yeah, <laughs> two women. Uh. The Jamie Bran reunion. Yeah. Which I thought that looking at Jamie's face, he was figuratively pushed out of a window. He was like, what the fuck? Right. He's like, now Bran mm -hmm. pushed him. Yeah, he's probably not upset. Like, uh, you know. Forgive and forget. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> Bran, he, he's beyond those. It's like he's above those things. He transcends, uh, you know, pushing out of windows and like uh, <laughs> murder attempts. This is supposed to be a happy occasion. Let's not bicker and argue about who killed who. Right, again, again, when Sam learns that she killed his brother, and again, it's like... Yeah, they're all victims and perpetrators, and like, okay, we got it, let's move on, you know? Definitely, definitely. Ah, okay. Another thing that I wrote, so, John is bringing his new girlfriend to meet his family, mm -hmm. and Daenerys is bringing her new boyfriend to meet her family, the dragons, they're just like... And that was a definite callback to the Igrit uh, cave, right? We could be here forever, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and then when they start to kiss, like Drogon, the son, who is also the dad, right? right? Just like, yeah. Are you gonna fuck my mother now? Yeah. And then conversing in King's Landing, mm -hmm. uh, Cersei's dragon is uh, the mountain, yeah. and he's looking at Euron. Are you gonna fuck my mother now? And he's like... <laughs> I think he's just like, oh, I can't stand him, so annoying. So annoying, yeah. 
And not in a good way. She says, oh, you're definitely interesting. No, I think you're boring. Right. And, you, and you're the most arrogant person I know. No, I think he's very insecure. Was that good? Was that good? <laughs> yeah. Did you have fun? <laughs> yeah. Please? My God, no? yeah. Huh? No? Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> no, 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 I'm very confident. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, come on. If you couldn't see and feel that she had some fun, then maybe she didn't. I don't know. It was to say I fucked the queen and I did it better than this and that, you know. Right, it's for bragging rights later. Right, exactly. It's for showing other guys and telling other guys and feeling stronger than other guys. So I think there's an interesting uh, element here. So ostensibly, the feudal system is simpler and it's easier for you as a leader, whether you are a lord, a high lord, or a king or queen, it, it should be easier for you to rally your people around around you. I'm calling out the banners. Okay, everybody comes. And in a democracy, you have all kinds of different people with, with different ideas. You have checks and balances and you want to go to war, but Congress can overrule you. And then you have the Supreme Court and all that. But when there is a war, it's easier for democracies to unite. The US was attacked in Hawaii. And in Washington, uh, DC, the other side of the continent, the, the president says, we have been attacked. Now we are going out to war. One, one attack, one speech, all the nation's forces now, they, they cooperate for this goal. The industries, the people, the media, they all point to the same direction. So it's interesting how such a complex system mm -hmm. that is harder to navigate on a day-to-day -day basis is easier to harness in times of war than a more simple system and structure of government where there's a war and then oh, the Lannisters are coming over. We don't want to fight with the Lannisters. And as we saw in World War II, we compared John to Churchill. He's the wartime leader. Mm -hmm. And he's the best place to unite everybody for this war. After the war, Winston Churchill, the war hero, the, the election right after the war, he lost and got taken out of office. Mm -hmm. And I think this is what will happen to, to John. Okay, our voice card is full, so this is a time to wrap it all up. Thank you, everybody. Tomorrow, okay, so write your questions in the comments or tweet us your questions. And be sure to subscribe to never miss a video. We're going to have every day a video. Q&A, another, like, we're going to psychoanalyze characters. We're going to science out the shit of the story. New videos about other movies, other stories, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell to never miss anything. Thank you for watching that video. I hope you enjoyed it. You know what I hear most often from new patrons coming into our Patreon page is that they've been enjoying God Academy videos for a long time and that they're happy that they finally can support the channel. So you too can be happy. Happiness is just around the corner. It's on patreon.com slash godacademy. Bliss. Just one cup of coffee a month. Come on. I like coffee.